All right, thank you for joining us. My name is Omar Jaju, and this is the interview on the Chronicle. Today, my guest is Almame Manga, the newly appointed integrity officer of the Gambia Football Federation. We are here to talk about a lot of things, including his appointment and his role as the integrity officer of the Gambia Football Federation. Mr. Almame Manga, thank you very much for, for, for having us here. Thank you very much, um, Omar. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to have you in my office for uh, what I'll call the maiden interview. So yes, I'm, I'm pleased to be to, to have you here. Let's start with uh, a brief dis description of yourself. I mean, your background, uh, uh, both educational, professional, and even sporting background. Yes, um, of course, you know my names already. My my name is Almami S. Manga. I was actually born in. Um, um, in a very small village in the Funi, it's called Kanfenda. Uh, this was sometime around the 1986, 25th of May to be specific. And then I attended Changajur Primary School, went to St. Edward's um, Upper Basic School in Buyam. Um, later I proceeded to Fatima uh, Technical High School, and upon completion, I did um, pursued a diploma in ICT at the President's International Award Scheme. And after this was in 2008, and from there I joined the uh, Gambia Police Force as a recruit. And uh, training lasted for almost three to four months, and then came out, posted to the prosecutions um, in the police headquarters, within the police headquarters. And then this was um, in 2009 and 2010, I decided it was not enough. I enrolled at the West African Insurance Institute where I pursued a, a diploma in law and successfully completed in 2011. And then in 2011, towards the end of 2011, I enrolled um, at the Management Development Institute where I also pursued a diploma in Peace and Conflict Studies. And uh, that was um, not enough for me. I then uh, decided that I wanted to be a lawyer, and that was when I enrolled um, at the University of the Gambia in 2012. And then 2012, all the way to December 2015, it was actually when I completed my Bachelor of Laws uh, degree. And then in 2016, actually, I enrolled at the Gambia Law School uh, to become a, a barrister. And uh, before completing um, that program, I won Achievement Scholarship um, to uh, pursue a master's degree uh, in the United Kingdom. I was actually at the University of Aberdeen, where I pursued a degree of uh, Master of Laws in Human Rights and Criminal Justice. Uh, that has been my um, education career so far. And then back in the police, uh, I've always maintained uh, my role as a police prosecutor. And since then, I have, you know, gradually, you know, moved along the, uh, the steps up to the position of uh, uh, an assistant superintendent of, of, of police. And not long ago also, I think last year or so, I was finally actually called to the bar, to the Gambian bar as a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of the Gambia. And yes, this has been my career. There are a lot of things that happened, but I think these were the main highlights as far as um, my journey is concerned. And regarding sports, I have been an active member of, um, I've been playing football, even at the school level. And then I've been also a keen follower of Gambian sports. Um, very, very keen follower. And also internationally, I, am, I, am, I support a lot of um, international football clubs, for example, Manchester United, which has been my uh, favorite club since childhood. And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm a sportsman, uh, just to cut a long story short. Do you have an experience of sports in sports administration and uh, not at all uh, quite i have to be honest with you i've not had any formal experience um what used to happen does in mean, village sports where you part of a, a committee a night now a dance committee secretary and then uh, those kind of things but at the uh, the higher level i have not been um 
been part of. I've never been in, in, in the sports administration. So basically, yes, that's it. Uh, hearing you speak about your background, you clearly like football, no doubt about that. But why do you like football? Uh, football is a game that is, I mean, it keeps me on the edge of the seat anytime I go out to watch a football game. Um, it's just natural, you know. I, I just like football, and because it's something that I have also been involved even as a child uh, back in the, in the in the village in those days when we used to play football barefooted, and also going to uh, to a school, um, primary school, secondary school, and even at the high school, I used to be part of. Um, I was a prolific striker uh, during my days. <laughs> Um, at Fatima Senior Secondary School. So yes, it's something that I, I loved, apart from football, wrestling and other things. But football, for me, is, um, is a no-go area. I, mean, I, don't, I don't compromise that with anything else. Okay. And now here you are appointed as the Integrity Officer of the Gambia Football Federation. Uh, how did this thing happen? Was it out of a pool of potential candidates or you were handpicked? Um, I... It was, uh, I was seated where I am, I mean, and then I got a call um, from someone at the GFF uh, that said to me, um, there is this new position and, uh, the, the, you know, they decided that um, they want to approach me. I did not actually know the existence of some of these things. So I was approached uh, by someone at the GFF who asked for my opinion and asked if I would actually be interested in doing this job for them. Uh, it's a non-salary job. It's an ad hoc responsibility. So I asked for some of these things, whether it's anything that would actually affect my current position as a police officer. Uh, because for me, first and foremost, I'm a police officer. And I have no intention, immediate intention, of quitting the Gambia Police Force um, anytime soon. And I, I, I had to ask, and they said yeah, it's one of those ad hoc um, responsibilities that you can do simultaneously. And then I also okay, I said, can you give me a document to, to see uh, what is the nature of the job? Because I just don't want to take the job um, when I don't know what is involved. I have to look at it and then see whether it's something that I think I'll be able to do or is something that I should be able to have pass on, develop pass on over a period of time. Because you see, it's important. You have to love what you're doing. If you don't, then it's going to be, there are going to be problems. Uh, so I looked at it and I said, well, it's something that, yes, I think I can do. I think I can contribute. Whether I'll be perfect or not, well, time will, will definitely uh, tell. But looking at integrity and how football, especially looking at some of these um, ingredients that are impeding into the beautiful game. If you are given such a responsibility to see how you can help, uh, I think it's also an opportunity for me. It's an opportunity for us to get things right as a country because in the past there are a lot of football-related um, issues that really kind of dent yeah. the country's image. Yeah. So if you're giving such an opportunity to um, really be part of um, straightening things up. Um, I think I, yeah, I have to give it a shot. So that is how it all came about. We will come more on the, your roles and responsibilities a bit later in the, in the interview. But what's the, what's the tenure of your appointment? Well, um, as we speak now, the, there is no, uh, it's not to my knowledge. Yes, like I said, um, it's, um, it's, um, there, has, there is no tenure. As far as I know, I've not been told um, what is the tenure of my office. But again, you have to understand that this is a, a new portfolio, uh, a new division uh, created uh, uh, by FIFA. So essentially, the GFF themselves are not very much... Um, um, they're trying to also get advice, more advice uh, from FIFA as to a lot of other things. Of course, I've just received my practical handbook, but I'm sure some of these things will come in, in due process. Then at least we'll, I should be able to know what is the tenure of my uh, response, uh, resp my tenure of my office. So for now, 
if I tell you that this is the tenure, this is how my term is, the first term is, I'm, I'm, I'll not be telling you the truth because I'll be speculating and I don't want to actually speculate. So why do you think you are the right guy for this position despite having zero experience in sport administration? Well, um, generally experience is not something that you're born with. Um, it's something that you can actually um, acquaint yourself or something you can acquire over a period of time. Uh, I think the most important thing is uh, the person. Um, you look at the person, his commitment, his dedication, and um, his integrity as well, because it's about integrity. So you have to look at the person, a lot of factors. I did not appoint myself, but I'm so maybe the JFF would be in a better position to answer this question. But as far as I am concerned, uh, I am giving a tax, regardless of my zero experience in football administration. Uh, I think um, I should be able to learn very quickly. Um, uh, that, um, yeah, I think I should be able to learn very quickly and then adapt to the rules because it's all about um, going through the practical handbook, which I have just received from FIFA, um, to go through it, to look at what, it's, what the job actually entails. And yes, learn very quickly, but I have to admit that I have to learn very, very quickly uh, because um, a lot is on the table, which really requires um, some kind of uh, fixing. So yes, zero experience, but be rest assured uh, that over within a short period of time, we'll be talking about something else because uh, the key thing is about dedication, commitment, and having the right tools. And I think the tools are already there and uh, the support will also come from the GFF and the media and every uh, relevant football stakeholder. So yes, it's something you can, you can do. It's not rocket science, in my opinion, yeah. Okay, so now uh, tell me your roles as the integrated officer of the Gambia Football Federation. Yes, um, thank you. My role basically is to um, serve as that uh, communication hub uh, between the GFF and the uh, international football governing body, which is FIFA, and every other stakeholder as far as football administration is concerned. Basically, it's um, to ensure that issues of integrity as far as football in this country is concerned would have to the fight against anything that will um, affect that would have to be spearheaded by myself. That is basically my responsibility. And the integrity, the job of the integrity officer is to make sure that match fixing does not take place. Football uh, manipulation of games and competitions to influence an unlawful outcome will definitely not also be allowed. Any football related corruption that seeks to influence the outcome of the game is also not allowed. Doping is also not allowed in sports, as well as um, uh, betting, football betting, betting in, in football. These things are all frowned upon by um, uh, FIFA statutory ob ob uh, objectives. So my job is to make sure that I put up mechanisms, because FIFA have already developed an integrity officer kit, and they have already supplied me with some of these things. Now, one would ask the question, how are you going to do this? Now, it's, going to be, it's not going to be easy. But what is going to happen is there is going to be a series of trainings. And I'm just going through the handbook. I am very soon, I will be done, and then I'll come up with my first report. Because I have to ask FIFA, to assist us establish some of these structures. For example, there has to be a reporting mechanism, even within the GFF website. So manga is learning on the job? Well, yes, if you say that you are not wrong, but um, um, you have to understand that the job of integrity was not, um, FIFA never had such a, of a response, a position. It never had such a division. Uh, this was created sometime last year, so you would expect that you would bring in somebody who will actually use his experience he has gathered over the years to see how he can use that to actually um, land on the job. But 
it's it's a Herculean tax. I can tell you that without a shadow of doubt. Uh, but yes, the most important thing is we have the commitment. We are prepared to get the structures in place. FIFA is also ready to make sure that we have the structures and then set the ball open uh, open running. Now, why do you think FIFA is more concerned now about these integrity things? I mean, if you're recommending the uh, yeah. Affiliate associations, yeah, yeah, well, I, I think um, you, you as a journalist, you must be aware that, you know, there has been a lot of activities by some people who are so aff affiliated with football, um, doing things that really are not part of the game, like corruption-related issues. We have heard that. Not long ago, you've seen uh, a journalist in Ghana who have exposed some of these football officials into... Um, expose them in relation to their activities, you know, selling games, doing things that really tends to actually compromise the game as it is. So FIFA is very concerned, and this part of the world where we live in, um, whether you like it or not, we are in a red zone uh, in terms of some of these things. So FIFA thinks that, you know, for us to promote the rule of fair play, which football is all about, we have to make sure that we fight these issues. We fight um, issues of match manipulation, issues of match fixing, issues of betting in sport, and any other activity that tends to, uh, you know, provide or give rise to an um, something unnatural, you know, then we have to step in. Yeah, FIFA, FIFA, FIFA needs that. FIFA needs because in, in 2015, remember the, the, the scandal, the, the corruption scandal that hit the, uh, the body. In fact, they need that yeah. uh, to, yeah. to, to regain the trust and the confidence of people. Yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely agree. And at the level of FIFA, yes, we all know about what happened, uh, the, the, the corruption scandal that was really um, uh, you know, all over the world. Everybody was talking about it and how um, even at the African continent, at, at the level of uh, the uh, level of CAF, you would notice that they were not also spared. A lot of people actually um, got a, 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 a bitter lesson. Uh, the, the consequences were grave. Uh, you could see some people were banned uh, by FIFA and some were fined, uh, okay, by the FIFA Ethics Committee uh, because of the role they had played in actually. Um, getting some things uh, their way, things which are not actually in line with uh, the status, uh, statutory objectives uh, of FIFA. So yes, um, it's necessary because football is very lucrative. Make no mistake about that. Um, there is a lot of money, um, a lot of finances being pumped into FIFA and football in general to make sure that football remains the way it is. But people, some people have a tendency of using other routes, okay. you know, Very so that's a question. Well, who are you answerable to? I am answerable to the GFF. Who? The, the GFF, the gate bank can be the GFF? <laughs> well, the, the, uh, the, 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 the clinic, first, the no, the, the, the executive committee, because um, they are appointed me uh, as a result of a recommendation by FIFA that this is what we are doing, and since 2018, FIFA have kind of broadened the fight against um, issues that tends to impede the integrity of uh, football. So FIFA had actually sent a circular to them, asking them it's about time that they identify somebody who will be appointed as the integrity officer. And then my details were collected and then forwarded to FIFA. Administratively, yes, but in terms of my job, I am independent. And because it's about integrity, you don't know who is involved. And sometimes if the person you are reporting to is involved in the game, how do you deal with that? So that is why most of these things roles, one would think that, yes, you have some kind of independence. And administratively, I am with DGFF when it comes to my administrative um, uh, work. But when it comes to my operational work, I have that independence and I report to the integrity office. What will be your immediate task? The immediate task as we speak is to raise more awareness because this is a new office. Not many people know about it. 
um, is to raise awareness and then the next phase would be to conduct integrity workshops at different levels. The law enforcement, the media, the football professionals, the amateurs, the referees, and the stakeholders in the beautiful game of football so that they will know what, it has, what is at stake. Do you understand? Even at the grassroots level, we intend to have workshops. That's what we call integrity workshops. We will discuss with FIFA, we'll let them know our plans, and then the GFS so that we will find a way of actually uh, mobilizing the needed resources so that we can have these things uh, done as soon as possible. Because people need to know about the existence of this office. Not many people, some people don't even know what integrity officer's role is all about. So you need to have most many workshops of such a kind, like integrity workshops, targeting the uh, football clubs, targeting football administrators, targeting football professionals, and also targeting the referees, and targeting those people in charge of managing football at the grassroots level. So these things would have to be done as soon as possible. And after that also we are working on trying to come up with a legal framework because that is also very key. When people commit these offenses, what do you do with them? You just talk to them or let them go? No. There has to be a legal framework that will penalize some of these things at domestic level so that when you are found to be involved in match fixing, we will resort to a particular law, all right? And then put you before a court of competent jurisdiction and deal with you accordingly. And then the sanctions would have to be there. But then in doing that, we will have to align some of these things with the FIFA uh, regulations as far as fighting in, um, um, issues of, like I've just stated, are concerned, ensuring that integrity of the game is in place. And then also, once we are done with that, we'll try to establish a judicial body. We'll work with the judiciary. A judicial body, perhaps a sports tribunal. Yeah. In the country. I wanted to say that. Yes, 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 there is. A sports tribunal would have to be created. We'll work very closely with government on that to have a sports tribunal, and then this tribunal will be trained. For example, if you look around, you have the industrial tribunal in this country, social security tribunal. We do not have a sports tribunal. We have to have that. That is my immediate priority. We have to have that and then get somebody responsible, two or three individuals responsible and they will be trained on sports law because that is very important and the way it is going to operate would not be different from how the court of arbitration of sports operates because that is the uh, that is the that is the idea to make sure that the football is dealt food matters relating to football are dealt with in a separate uh, matter and then we will also train people on the rules of evidence gathering evidence and that is where the law enforcement is actually... So who trains who? You are just alone? Yes. Uh, who get, trains who? We will, uh, the, beautiful, the beauty about all this is that FIFA is there to support us. All they are asking from us is to ask for support. Now, whatever we need, if we run into trouble, we have to write to FIFA. They have a specific department, integrity uh, department, which is actually under the broader department of legal and compliance at the at the fifa head office in in zurich so they are ready to assist us and um uh, they, they they are ready uh, so so that they will send experts to come and get our people trained uh, so that's 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 the non we will we'll have that we'll definitely so how will you measure your success as the integrity officer well so far what you mean as it now or how will you measure your success? Well, I will measure my success based on the amount of cases that are reported. Because to say that it's not happening, that's not true. We know some of these things are happening. Right. But some of these match fixing, some of these activities that are not actually in line with the Code of Ethics or the FIFA statutory uh, objectives, it's about encouraging people to speak up. Because in this country, we have a culture of silence. People sometimes um, know that one or two things are happening, but because they feel that saying it loud would put somebody else in trouble. So you see there is this kind of, okay, this master has syndrome. So we'll have to work very hard and see to it that people have the confidence to report some of these things. And not just to come to me and report. We have to establish um, reporting mechanisms. One would have to be 
created within the GFF website. They have to have a point where people will go and report these things. That is a whistle blowing. Yeah, absolutely. Energy. So we, we will come to that. Right. We will come to that later. Well, tell me your relationship with the GFF leadership. Kababajo, Bakari Jami, Lamin Jase, and even Lang Tombong Tamba. Well, for Lang, uh, he, he has been my uncle. He's a distant uncle. And I've known him for quite some time. But to be quite honest with you, Lang did not know me um, until recently. Uh, Lang, even when he was at the helm of affairs at the Gambia Armed Forces, I, I know him, and that's natural. But he did not, we did, he did not know who Almame was. He did not. And for Kaba, I have never known Kaba from Adam. It's just now that I know who Kaba, who, okay, when he was minister. You see him in TV, say, this is minister for this. That's all I know about Kaba. And I've not, I cannot remember ever sitting down with Kaba to discuss any issues. Maybe it's my Facebook friend. For Jassy, I cannot remember when I met Jassy. I think it was not long ago, after my appointment, actually, to uh, pick up my appointment letter from him and then discuss on how. So I've never known him before other than um, be him being a Facebook friend. Um, and who else did you mention? Uh, Bakari Jami. I don't know Bakari. It's just now I know him. I never, I've never known Bakari before. Um, um, yes, some, pit, some of them may know me because of my activities in courtrooms and stuff like that. Yeah, but now you have a good relationship and uh, apart from the work sometimes. Uh, don't you think this will kind of interfere in your job? Not at all. Um, this is not going to interfere my job. What I did was I tried, I did my homework well. And um, when I received the appointment, I looked at it. I allowed FIFA to send me the kit. I looked at the nature of the job. And yes, sometimes it would involve some movements here and there, training workshops and then, you know, moving around with the team and stuff like that to see what is actually, because that's very key. Um, uh, uh, I'm not told about that, by the way, from JFFO in my letter. But uh, at some point, I'll have to demand that I move with the team uh, to see what is happening. Because all these things happen sometimes not at home, but where the team goes and around. So my job would definitely moving around, watching league games, talking to people, people that people think don't matter, to try to sound their opinion, to try to see whether they have any knowledge about anything that is happening within um, the football setup or either on field uh, or off the field. So I've asked the blessings from the Inspector General of Police by way of giving them a notice that I have been given this job and then it involves these things I've just mentioned and sometimes I'll have to be, I'll have to ask that I'm excused mm -hmm. to go and run because it's all about, um, um, it's all about the country yeah. and they have responded favorably that yes, uh, they congratulate me and wish me uh, the very best of luck and uh, that, you know, yes, That's I have the full support of the... Let's uh, move to key selected contemporary issues yeah. around sports. Yeah. It includes anti-doping, yeah. uh, good governance, but to start with uh, anti-doping, uh, I hope you are familiar with the, 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 the water code of conduct or the contemporary issues in, 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 in global sports when you talk about doping. Yeah. Well, absolutely, yes. You know, doping, it's um, generally, if I am to give this definition, is, is about the inducement of some kind of substance, you understand, into someone to help him perform extraordinarily, you know, do things that under normal circumstances he wouldn't be able uh, to do and uh, they are not accepted and you know FIFA itself have a very strong policy on some of these things and if you are found wanting you have to sometimes you face a life ban you understand so uh, yes these things are part of it because once you do that you are actually seeking to influence the outcome of a game do you understand? Because it gives you extra, um, uh, it gives you something extra, which ordinarily would help you to do something that under normal circumstances you would not be able to do. Um, so yes, I am familiar of this thing, familiar about 
uh, some of these things. And yes, we are going to further uh, seek knowledge on it, seek further clarification and see how we can also contribute our quota towards fighting. What do you think should be in a code of conduct? I mean, the, in an anti-doping policy for the GFF that is in conformity with the whole anti-doping uh, 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 code? You see, for example, in law, when you want to draft a legislation, uh, you don't just sit in your house and just think, okay, we should do this. Sometimes you look around the sub-region first, whether there is a similar legislation to that. If that is not, then you go to the continental, uh, the, the continental level. So what is, is very simple. What we have to do is the anti-doping policy by FIFA is international. It's cut across the board. Now what we have to do is we have to domesticate it. Because we have a, a regime, okay? We have, um, um, we do not have a money system. A money system essentially which says when something, if you're, if you're part of um, an international body, if laws or ratif you have ratified, it forms part of, part of your uh, domestic laws. But we have a dual system. Even though it is passed internationally, we'll have to domesticate it. So what we have to do is we have to look at what is made out there. We try to import it in our own front and see if we can hire, um, for example, a legal draft person because drafting laws is, is a different field of its own. Not every lawyer can do it. We get the individual on board and then give him a specific tax. And then he goes about doing his research, just like what the Constitutional Review Commission is doing. They did not just sit in, in the country and just draft laws. They moved around, saying, trying to see international best practices and see how they can actually import them you know, into our constitution. So it's not, it's not going to be anything different. We're going to adopt that policy and then see how we can also domesticate some of these laws so that they will have the force of law in this country because there's no point having a law in place or a statute or a regulation in place when it does not have the force of law. So we'll have to first and foremost do that so that these things would be part and parcel of the sporting laws. We have to have um, laws in this country that will regulate sports in this country and it's very key. So perhaps we will try to audit the available laws we have now and see whether they are fit for purpose. Where you have, have a law. Uh, not, have you seen any I, I have not. I have not seen any. I have not seen any any sports law, and that is why uh, we sometimes when some of these things happens, you resort to the other laws. For example, bribery. You go to the con uh, criminal court. But we want things to be dealt differently. We want to have a statute. Okay, a legal framework that will be holistic, all right? We'll look at all these things or some of these concerns and then we help address them and have our, uh, you know, uh, our laws kit so that uh, when someone does something, this is it. And we also have laws that will promote journalists, actually freedom of press, especially sports journalists, that will be able to whistleblow some of these things and report issues, factual reporting, so that these things will actually come out. Things that are lying underneath will actually be brought up by the media and other relevant stakeholders. In that way, when perpetrators are known, they are dragged before a court of competent jurisdiction and they are dealt with decisively. That is the only way you can deter some of this. Now, let's talk about the process. Do you have any clear process uh, that you will take, like, uh, to, 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 to address, I mean, a suspected doping case for the GFF? For now, for now, like I stated, the clear process, we all know that these things are not allowed. You don't need, these are basic things. So governments are doing doping? Personal, at my personal level, I cannot say because I have not come across any uh, case where a person has been found to be um, involved in doping, I, I, and I have never also heard about it being reported in. So as an integrated officer, are you waiting for a case, or uh, do you think there's no. a need for precaution? My position pre-integrity officer is not the same as now. 
Yeah. Now I am an integrity officer. Yeah. I don't have to sit yeah. and wait for people to come and tell me. I have to move around. I have to employ other mechanisms, which I might not reveal uh, to the public, a mechanism that will encourage people reporting anonymously. Mm -hmm. And then when these things happen, then we'll launch what we call preliminary investigations mm -hmm. to find out uh, whether the report is genuine or it's a report that is seeking to settle scores. Because these things all, you can rule them out. They may happen. There's a tendency that these things may happen. But first and foremost, we have to create a platform, a reporting mechanism that people will come forward and report. But before that, we have to make sure that we raise the awareness. People have to know that this is a crime. This is not supposed to be. I mean, this is supposed to be known to people now. Well, I mean, since 2015, yes. there has been scandals all over the world. Yes. But it, like I said, um, if people know about it and they don't report, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's not, you cannot hold them account. Yeah. You understand? So we have to make our laws in such a way that failure to report in itself is a crime. That's concealment. We have to generate laws that will make it incumbent mm -hmm. upon everybody, either you are indirectly part of it or indirectly involved, to report. Do you understand? So, um, it, 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 the, the laws would have to be made in such a way that we are seen to be responsible. Because you don't just make laws for the sake of making them. You have to make laws that make so that people are responsible and people adhere to some of these rules and regulations. They are very... Another key component in, in, in sports integrity is good governance. Uh, how will you ensure that the GFF upholds and respects the universal principles of ethics? The, the GFF, I mean, ethics in sports is something that is basic. Everybody involved in admi football administration or sports administration needs to understand that ethics very important. But not everyone practices Practice. ethics. See, now, that is where I'm coming. Not everyone practices. And that is why the consequences would have to be made so unpalatable that anybody who decides to deviate or derogate from these are her responsibilities, compromising the ethics and the integrity of the offices he holds. Then the punishment would have to be made in such a very unpalatable way that you, know, you face the full force of the law. And these things are not sometimes done in isolation. Compromising integrity in sports is not done in isolation. Then sometimes it's not just one individual involved. There are a lot of people involved. For example, you want to manipulate the outcome of a game. You don't just do it single-handedly. You involve the players. Do you understand? You involve the, um, the football administrators on the other side. For example, if it's a real banjul, you have to involve some people, insiders. So it's not just me sitting in my office and decide that I have to compromise with the ethics of, you know, uh, the, uh, the ethics um, guiding my operations as, as GFF integrity officer, mm -hmm. and then nobody expects to know it. When you do it, you are expecting to get something in return. Who do you get this thing in return from? Okay. So how do you make sure that the GFF maintains uh, at all levels in sports sector a zero policy tolerance towards all forms of corruption, this, bribery, yeah and even illegal financing of, of money. Yes, yeah, this is what I'm saying. There is a practical handbook of um, protecting integrity in football. And that is what I am, that is what is before me. That's what you're mastering. That's what I'm mastering. How long will it take you to master the book? I'm almost done, okay. you understand. Um, the GFF would have no option than to comply with the rules. We are part and parcel. We are a member of federation to FIFA. And then we cannot cherry pick what we apply and what we do not apply. The GFF would have to put these mechanisms in place. I, I was supposed to have a meeting with the GFF secretary, uh, general, general secretary. And these are some of the things we will have uh, an informal discussion. And then uh, I'll come up with a position paper. All right, to tell them this is what we have to do as far as fighting or protecting integrity in football is concerned. 
And this integrity stuff is not just focusing on national teams alone. It is across the board, even at the grassroots. That's why I talked about integrity workshops. It is from the top to right uh, the last person in uh, Fatoto, where we have to you know, raise their awareness as to some of these things. Because it's important. If people do not know, how do you expect them to comply? You understand? If you know morally, we know that some of these things are, are not right. So the GFF would have to adopt a different approach. And they have to be robust in it to make sure that we have the laws in place and then we sensitize people about some of these laws. And, you know, just before you come again, you know, when we're drafting laws, it's just not two, three people sitting. You have to administer sometimes. There's a need to administer question, yes. You understand? To sample the views of the people. What do they want to see in the new law that will govern the administration of sports in this country? What do they want to see? What are some of the concerns? You'll have to do it in such a way that people do it anonymously. Do you understand? Talk to the journalists. People feel questions and then you answer questions. And then you begin to have an idea what is actually happening at the grassroots level. What is actually happening at the level of the clubs. Do you understand? Because sometimes you may know one or two things, but it's because you are an individual. You are not sure whether what you want to see will be supported by another person. And then if you say it and then you are alone, what are some of the consequences? When you are facing them, are you going to face them alone? Who is going to cry foul? Who is going to stand behind you to make sure that injustice does not take place? Because injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. So that is it. So the GFA would, will have, we'll sit with them. How would your unit, organization I'll call it, uh, sanction cases of corruption once you know them? There is a, a reporting mechanism. Uh, what we do not have now is at the level of, at the national level. And that is, but at the FIFA level they have, because they already have a statute, okay, how you can actually re report some of these things. There is an app. For example, you want to report some of things. There is an app, either through Android or a mobile app, per se. You can download it, all right? And then you can get your details. You can even report some of these things to FIFA anonymously. Or there is also an email address where you can report some of these things anonymously. That is what we seek to reproduce here. Do you understand? So that you can go to GFF website, you want to report a corruption-related case, there is going to be a button where you can just click and then you follow through the due process and report. So what is your whistleblowing process? I want to be a whistleblower for your office. For me, right now, as far as um, I'm concerned, if you don't, um, um, uh, because you have to understand that this office is less than one. Month. Example, not me, but I'm saying someone out there yeah, wants to be a whistleblower for your office. Trump, what should the, the, what, what should the person do? Uh, we have an open door policy. Or you can go to our Facebook page, send us a message there. We have created um, a reporting mechanism. Well, not formally, informally for now, because the person reporting at the moment would be done. You understand. But uh, as time goes, we will generate a, a, I mean, um, um, a mechanism whereby the person report, you can choose to report yourself by your name or you can choose to report anonymously. How do you protect your whistleblowers? This office will survive on information. Without information this office cannot survive and you cannot be everywhere. You need people to report. You cannot compromise your source of information. It's like killing this office before it even so, how so for me, if they report matters, they can be rest assured. Because it's not just about them, it's also about my integrity. If people report, for example, Omar will come to my office and tell me that this is what is happening, and you don't want your cover blown, you know, it's going to be in principle. We're going to take what you're telling us and then launch our investigation. Do you need a whistleblower at the GFF right now? Well, I wouldn't be too hasty for now to say some of these things because um, I'm not aware of an instance where somebody has reported and 
the report has not been taken seriously. Um, I am not also aware the level of willingness at the level of the GFF. Um, willingness in terms of how they uh, take some of these complaints, I do not know. Uh, like I said, I am new into this job. I, it will have to take me some time to try to know some of these structures uh, that are available at the GFF. Maybe they have, maybe they do not. But in the event they have, we will try to look at it and see whether it's feasible under the circumstances. If it is not, we will then suggest to them that, well, I think we can do it this way. A whistleblower? Yeah. That they should appoint a whistleblower? No, no, no we're not talking about it. We should report in mechanisms okay. for now. Okay. But whistleblowers, um, generally, if GFF appoints a whistleblower, uh -huh. they're going to be, comp it's gonna be compromised okay. because how do you expect the whistleblower to report against his employers? Exactly. You know? So that is it. That is, that is something to, to, I think that's what we call investigative journalism. That would have to also take center stage. Journalists would have to um, look at the ethics of the profession and inculcate the habit of investigating matters and reporting them. Because journalists, you are not obliged to report to blow out your source of information. You do that when you want to. But if you don't want and you think doing that is going to compromise you as a journalist, is going to compromise the person giving you information, you don't need to. You are not under any obligation. For now, perhaps we can resort to that because there is a new freedom of um, 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 information bill, um, something like that. I'm not very sure the actual um, wordings of that bill. I'm not sure if it is passed uh, by a parliament, but I'm, um, what I do know is that the process is at an advanced stage. Um, that can be used. Journalists can use that to utilize that. You understand? To make sure that they also have their network because at the end of the day is the ethics of the job. Yeah. Journalism is a very noble job and people have to make sure that if you are a journalist, you are a journalist through and through. You know, and that you are not fearful. Report what you think. So are you insinuating that you need a journalist to be a whistleblower? Because integrity officer, definitely you need a whistleblower. Be at the GFF, be at any level. You need someone to give you information. This is what I'm what saying. Most passion to give you information. My, we cannot say we have to appoint an individual to serve as a whistleblower. And what do you need? Then? What we need is everybody should become a whistleblower. Every, the entire country, everybody should become a whistleblower. That might not be the, the business for everybody, a uh, booba or Modu might want to say, okay. I don't want to be a whistleblower. But then, yes, perhaps he does not have the love of uh, sports and he does not want to see to it that integrity in football. And of course, there are requirements of whistleblower. Yeah, you need yeah, some skills. Yeah, you yeah, need to be intelligent. You need to be easy focus. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. For now, everybody has to report all of this malpractice. Well, but you need, it, you need I, I definitely need that. Okay. I definitely need that. I definitely need that. And I cannot come out and tell you, okay, I want to take people by surprise. For example, when it comes to the job of a whistleblower, I don't want people to know who even my whistleblowers are. Exactly. You understand? Yeah. So the process is already ongoing. <coughs> okay, we are discussing the, we, at the moment, we are at the conversation stage. Yeah. All right? And once we are done with that, we'll try to identify people. We'll try to make a suggestion on some of these things, how we can work with FIFA yeah. and the GFF to identify people, they know that someone will be doing it. But who is going to be that person, they might not, I will not reveal the individual because you're compromising the individual. Because if people know who the whistleblower is, everywhere he goes, they keep mute. Everywhere he goes, nobody wants to associate with him. But whistleblowers are supposed to be within us. Is they should be walking... Uh, like what happened in FIFA in 2015. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Thanks to, thanks to a whistleblower. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's talk about the financial integrity, another key component in, in, in your job. Uh, how will you ensure that, uh, uh, that you uphold the highest standards in terms of financial integrity and transparency across all football, football sectors? Um, you see, where monies are involved, there is always bound to be temptation sometimes. And we have to try to separate money from integrity. The people have to understand that, that when it comes to protecting integrity, nothing will be allowed to actually compromise that. Be it money, be it you are the richest football owner in this country, 
be it the fact that you are the poorest and you want to amass a lot of wealth over time, uh, we have to make sure that these things are, are addressed. But you see, we cannot address these things by talking only. We will talk and raise awareness. But until we have a solid legal framework that frowns at some of these things, we are bound to have problems. For now, what perhaps we can do is we look at our corruption-related laws. If financial malpractices are involved in the game, and we look at the sports laws, there's nothing to take care of that. We resort to our parent laws. We look at our criminal code. What is he saying? And the matter will be subjected to investigations. Make no mistake. Even whereas we do not have any sports law that frowns at it domestically, we can always fight some of these things by going back to our laws. We have the anti-money laundering laws. You have the criminal code. You have the economic crime, specified offenses act. You have a lot of other laws that really are looking at some of these things. So you may not be dealt with as a sports person, but you will be dealt as an individual doing something that is illegal as far as our statutes are concerned. So it's a cross level. So if today, Omar, you're going home, you see something that you feel is not in line with um, common sense, it's not in line with, um, it's prohibited by decency, and it's something that you have a feeling that our laws really have frowned at it frowned upon it. You have every right to approach and report. You can even do it at, before any police station. But in the event that you are not satisfied, you are not comfortable doing that, now that we have an integrity office, be asked as well, come forward. Come forward and then report the matter and then you know, the, the rest is now for us to, to deal with. And we will up, up, follow the, the appropriate um, steps and make sure that the matter is, the investigations are fully um, exhausted. So you talked about a sports tribunal. Yeah. Key. key. That, that is very key. And, and, and as I said initially, it's, a, it's an immediate priority. We need to work very hard, be like what the Social Security did. Um, they created their own complex, all right? An office complex where they appointed it in con conjunction with the, the judiciary. And the judiciary identified the magistrate will be hearing some of these cases, Social Security related cases. You understand? That is what we are going to do. It's an immediate priority, and I'm going to bring it to the authority. We have to have that. Uh, you know, if, if it goes well, I intend to, um, if, if, I had, if I had my, if my wish is to be um, achieved, I would want to see that, let's say, before June. June. If, if it all goes as planned. I'll push and I'll work very closely with the relevant authorities to see how we can have that. Because that is key. That is very, very key. We have to have that. And, but again, you have to understand, setting up some of these things may have some bottlenecks here and there. We will, we will aggressively uh, confront some of these challenges and, and find a way of you know, dealing with them so that we have the structures up, up and running. Mm. Ending with the financial integrity, you are expected to uphold the high standards in terms of financial and integrity transparency across the GFF. Yeah. Specifically, how do you intend to do that? Like I said, I think some of the, the answer to your question, part of it has been given as an answer in a previous an question you did ask. Uh, but, uh, you know... Then like, maybe you, you were broad. Yeah, I was broad. Okay, I, yeah, I agree. You have to be specific. Yeah, like I said, the rules are the rules. It does not matter who is involved. Whether it's a GFF official, or it's a police officer, or it's a journalist, the rules are the rules. So what are the rules? The rules are that we are a member federation to FIFA. And FIFA has zero tolerance to some of these things. And if you do anything that is inconsistent with a particular provision of any FIFA statute, you will definitely be dealt with. I think this is common sense, and it is known by every football administration. You understand? But in the event they fail, or myself, I decide to compromise my own integrity as the integrity, then my office is of no use. Do you understand? So anybody in a similar position and you decide to compromise, you are not only waiting to be caught, but you are also betraying your own conscience and you are also letting down the whole nation. Do you understand? So it's not just for the laws to regulate how we go about doing certain things. Sometimes 
our instincts, our, 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 our conscience should also guide us how we go about doing some of these things. So these things will be discussed at the level of the GFF and that we, now that we have an office, we have to make sure that we, serve, we become examples. You cannot police when you need to be policed yourself. There has to be moral consistencies here yeah, and legal consistency. We cannot be saying one thing out and do something else. You know, that defies logic, it defies common sense, and it defies uh, decency. So uh, they knew this job, the FIFA did not just write to me or write to you. They wrote through the chief because they identified them as a very important player. You know, football administration is run by DFF in this country. And issues of integrity, they know very well. I mean, I, I know the people there. I think there are people who should be able to uphold the high standards of integrity. Uh, to end with uh, the financial integrity, uh, all these things about the laws and other regulations you've mentioned, but do you have an independent monitoring mechanism for this? Uh, well, for now, we at a local level, we do not have that. You understand, but the FIFA practical handbook on protecting integrity uh, has that. And that is why I'm not even supposed to disclose my operational work. The operational manual. The operational manual to um, anybody. Do you understand? I'm supposed to use it as a guide to how I go about running the office. And what I do even in the ground, I'm not supposed to discuss that with the president of the GFF okay. when it comes to my operations. Why? No, because, you know, you have to exhaust all levels. Some of these things you don't know. Maybe I'm even talking to Omar. Maybe you are even part of it. Perhaps other clubs have been using as their intermediary. <laughs> you understand? To do some, you know, negotiations with other match fixing and stuff. <laughs> you cannot say never. Some of these things there is, is a possibility. Do you understand? Yeah. So you have to um, make sure that you have these things in place. And once we have these laws in place, and even whereas we do not have some of these, these certain things constitute a crime in our broader legislations, legislation, legis, legislation, legislations. So. Um, yes, we'll have an independent monitoring mechanism and that I do not want to reveal now. Uh, I want to leave the play that very close to my chest as we speak. So um, I, I will unroll certain working mechanisms as well and in that I'll have to identify some people who will be doing the bidding for us or, you know, in different um, sports. So we are ending the interview on sports betting, I mean betting integrity. You, I'm very much sure you'll agree with me that uh, uh, a game is won due to a match fixing that all the noble principles of sportsmanship, the internal good of sport and the good values of sports are violated. I mean sports betting is not accepted anywhere in the world. But what is your understanding of sports betting? You hear sports betting, what comes to your mind? Sports betting it's predicting the outcome of a game with reasonable expectation of some form of considerations. That is, the, that is sports betting. Predicting the outcome of a game through some form of using monies, playing is sort of a competition before the competition. And it's very lucrative in some places. It's very, very, people can win a lot of money. Do you understand? And so where money is involved, expect people to go the extra mile, to do things, even leaving the legal track into a track that is not allowed, mm -hmm. but because of the potential outcome or what they aim to achieve at the, um, at the, end, at the end of the, the game. So betting is not allowed. You know, so like I stated initially, it is predicting the outcome of a game. So how do you fight betting? We already have, I think, um, um, betting uh, in this country is not new. I think it's happening. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. definitely happening. 
perhaps some may know that it's not allowed at the level of FIFA. Some may not know. They're doing it because perhaps they, their friends are into it or they're looking at the gains they're likely to get from them, from, from participating in such a, a, an activity. So, like I stated, we have to have a law that says this is banned. If it is not banned locally, how do you, even if, if it's not banned and you arrest people for doing a, such a thing, what do you do with them? You advise them and leave them? You take them through the process. Do you understand? And that is where the police would have to be involved on some state. When it is a law, for example, this is anti anti betting act, if we are to say that this is it. And anybody knows that betting, this is defined. Betting is this and that, and you are involved in it. You have to be punished. The police will, it will now form part of the laws in this country, and the police and other agencies responsible for enforcing law in this country would have no choice but to make sure that they go after anybody who is involved in sports betting. So the job we, we have to do, it's not something we have to wait. It's something that is of immediate priority. And we have to make sure that we put the right structures in place. We engage. The conversation has to start soonest so that we get some of these legal frameworks up and running. And then it will also create the, the tribunal, the sports tribunal. And then we appoint our prosecutors. Do you understand? Or we decide who has the powers to prosecute this. Is it the state? Or is it the police? Or is it the JFF have to have their own prosecutions department? We have to discuss. The conversations would have to start. Do you understand? So this is it. And perhaps maybe the GFF should also t try to look at the possibility of having a legal department now. A legal department that will be advising the, the executive, advising all the different structures at the GFF on some of these things. Because, you know, law is something that you don't just take for granted. You understand, because there's a saying, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. So perhaps I'll suggest some of these things to the GFF and see how we can uh, get, them in, in, uh, get them in place, because it's going to make the job of the GFF very, very um, easy. So that is it. That is, that is so far what we will do, Mr. Jaju. Thank you very much, uh, Almame. Thank you so much for talking to us. This is Almame Manga, the newly appointed Integrated Officer of the Gambia Football Federation. And this has been the interview on The Chronicle. Thank you for watching.